How do you protect your data on Windows servers? I bet you know some tricks, but can you do it without relying on complex and expensive solutions? For years, $5,600 per minute was cited as the average costs of an IT downtime, which actually comes from a 2014 study by Gartner. By 2022, a study by ITIC revealed that 44% of businesses face downtime costs as high as $16,700 per server per minute. And if you calculate the impact for an hour, it will be around a staggering $1 million. Not just the big enterprises, even for the small businesses with just one server, the conservative cost is around $1,600 per minute. With stakes this high, tools like Windyabity are really essential to keep your systems online and your business running smoothly. Hey everyone. I'm Yusuf and today we're diving into how you can implement Linux nodes to achieve highly available disks for your Windows service with WindyRPT. In that regard, we will also investigate how we can place services on top of a WindyRPT device while the Windows server doesn't have any actual disk. Let's get started. I will do a short explanation of the RPD first, and then I will show you a diagram, then we will jump into the real world scenario. The RPD is a kernel module where you load it into a Linux or Windows kernel, and then it creates a virtual block device on top of a real block device. And then you basically create an application on top of it. When an application writes into the virtual block device, the DRBD simply replicates that write I.O. in real time to the secondary DRBD, another node, where it simply creates a consistent replicas of the same data. With this, you can have a consistency between two nodes on the data where you can have highly available applications in real time. This DRBD is in the Linux kernel since 2009, and we, we released the Windows version several years ago, so you can uh, install it any Linux environment and Windows environment as you like. To have a similar installation like I did here, you can use the diagram that I showed you here. So we have two Linux machines and I installed an Alma Linux 9 on both of them. They have a backing device for 10 gig each. And I have a Windows 2009 virtual machine, which doesn't have any backing device for the data part. Obviously it has a disk for the operating system. And then I created a DRBD pair between these three machines where I created a diskless DRBD on the Windows. Before I jump into the real world scenario, I would like to show you my DRBD configuration file. This is my sample DRBD configuration file, and let's explore a little bit. The resource name is SMB. I can change it to anything as I like. I'm using the protocol C, and C means synchronous. And if you would like to have an asynchronous, just change the protocol type to A. And I have three nodes defined, one, two, and three. As you can see, I also gave them a node ID. And the node one doesn't have any actual disk for the DRBD resource file, but node two here and node three has a disk inside. And I have a connection mesh between the hosts with this simple command. After we just see the um, resource file, let's try to see how it actually works in a real world. Now, let's jump into the real world scenario. So we have the ABD1, the ABD2, and Vin the ABD1. Let's explore these machines a little bit. 
as you can see, we have NVMe 0 and 2 disk spared for the DVD. And I already created a LV here where we can use it for the DVD as well. This is Dev, VG, DVD, and SMB LV. It, it exists on two machines, and Win DVD doesn't have any. So let's start with creating our metadata for DRBD. And the command should be drbdatm create md and then smb. You need to type yes, and then it simply creates the first metadata for the DRBD. Let's just complete that one in the second node as well. But we don't need to do it on the third node because the diskless resources doesn't have any metadata. The metadata is uh, only uh, created on the disk full nodes if you need to do it. Now we created the metadata. We need to uh, make it up on all three machines. The ABDATM, up SMB, and we have to do it on the second machine as well. And we have to do this magic on the Windows machine as well. Now, when I say DRBD ADM status, I should see some inconsistent DRBD resource. As you can see, it says inconsistent on both nodes because we created a metadata on both servers, but we didn't start the first initial synchronization. To do that, we can choose DRBD1 or DRBD2, it doesn't matter. We just simply say DRBD ADM and then uh, primary and then SMB and dash dash horse and hit enter. When you check the status again, it starts doing the synchronization. I will pause my video here and then jump into the end of the synchronization. The synchronization is done and now we have up to date on all machines. Now I have to change the secondary on the AVD1. And let's check the status again. All of them are up to date. Now we have to do is DRBD ADM primary on the Windows DRBD. But before doing that, I would like to show you the disk management of the same machine. As you can see here, nothing is here. It's only the operating disk. When I say primary, immediately I saw the DRBD device here. When I say secondary, oh, it goes. As you can see, it's almost immediately. And then we have to initialize this disk because it's a brand new one, right? And then we create a simple volume on top of it. Let's call it D and SMB. And TFS is fine. And finish. And as you can see here, now we have a disk here, which is actually on Linux 1 and Linux 2. So when I create some files into it, when I put some files into it, it immediately replicates on both sides. As you can see here, the WinDRBD now is the primary and we have secondary on two Linux machines. You can create a um, MSSQL uh, database on top of this disk if you like and you can run it. And then with that, your data will be replicated between the ABD1 and the ABD2 easily. And you can simply create SMB shares on top of these drives. So you can have highly available disks for two nodes while you're sharing the SMB from a Windows machine. With this, you can simply create a, an integration, a seamless integration to your Active Directory to any other system that you might use in the Windows world or the application itself. And um, I believe there is a simple tool where you can create 
SMB shares in Windows. And I saw recently here, you can simply create a file and then share it as well. But I believe there's something here as well. Let's see. Um, yeah, I believe this is it. Yeah. So we can create an SMB share. Next, in the ABD, we choose the DABD device here. Next, let's call it WinDRBD SMB share. And next, and next, and obviously next, and create and close. Now it's ready to use from other machines if you like. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, it was pretty easy to create a WinDABD uh, device, which is diskless, on the Windows uh, machine. We just need to install the Windows uh, DABD into the Windows before you basically set this up. And I have some other videos on YouTube where you how it explains how you install the WinDABD in your Windows machines. And the Linux part, is easy again you can load the dabd kernel uh, node kernel module into your kernel and if you would like to uh, grab the newest version of dabd there is two ways to do it one you can simply grab it from the public repositories or you can uh, get the source code from github and compile it yourself for your specific kernel Now I would like to show you what happens if one of the nodes fails and if I can still reach the data in here. So we simply can do it like a graceful shutdown or a forceful shutdown. It doesn't matter. Let's just do a forceful shutdown for now so we can simulate a failure. I will shut down the first node from my virtualization platform. Now it's gone. As you can see, it doesn't respond to anything. And when I say the RBD ADM status, you can see the node one is connecting status, the RBD still primary, and the RBD two is active. And the Windy RBD still is reachable, and I can create some folders. Let's call it Yusuf. Yeah, it just says I cannot connect to the RBD one. And then I will create some text document, Yusuf, he lives into it. And when I do it, it I simply send this data to DFD2 and DFD1 is unreachable. I can create tons of files, it doesn't matter. Now I am um, powering up the DFD1 node as we speak. Now the DFD1 is um, powering on. We have to wait a little bit. We have the ADM status. It still says connecting. I will try to connect right now. Yes, it's already up. And we just need to do the ADM up. Sorry, up. SMB. You can see it's it was out of sync, and now it should be sync. The ADM status. You can see it's already up to date because so few data is changed. And when I checked the DFDDM status from WinDAVD as well, I can see it's up to date. And with that, the demo is ended. The options are literally unlimited. You can create a MSSQL service on top of this drive. You can create many other applications as, 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 as you like. You can create an SMB share and all of them will be highly available on the disk level where you can replicate the data between two Linux machines. And thank you for participating in this video. And hopefully we will meet you up again in the next videos where I ex ex explore more about WinDAPT and its use case in Windows world. Goodbye.